you really don't realize how inaccessible the city is until you need it to be accessible for you. Just because someone has a disability, that doesn't mean that they don't have a full life. But unfortunately, people see me as damaged goods and as broken and as like, I'm not even, not only not worthy of help or whatever, but like, I'm just not, I'm just sort of like the garbage of society, which is sort of how people with disabilities are seen. And it's like, nah, I'm not, I'm not anybody's garbage. I'm actually a queen, so there we go. <laughs> When I used to visit New York, before I actually lived here, I never really thought about accessibility issues. Once I moved here, I realized that there were all these little details about daily life that I had overlooked before. I often wonder how often the MTA does outreach with the deaf community here. I find that unless you're in the community, disability is not really on the public consciousness. Why would people stop and think like, oh, if this was bad for me today, if it took me an extra half hour to get home, gosh, maybe it took so-and-so three hours because no elevator was available. And not to justify it, but why would they? We're mostly focused on what affects us directly. And if you don't know, and if you're not living it, then why would it matter to you? New York City has one of the least accessible subway systems in the country. Nearly 30 years after the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act, only 23% of the city's subway stations have elevators. Of the 122 New York City neighborhoods served by the subway system, half don't have a single accessible station. And neighborhoods with accessible stations tend to be significantly more expensive. So I live in Throgsneck, which is far away from everything, everywhere, at the top of the Bronx, and it's completely inaccessible. I live about 40-ish minutes from the Parkchester station, and in their renovations, they did not include an elevator. And then I'd have to transfer over to three different buses to get to Manhattan, and who knows how long that's gonna take and how much that's gonna cost. Navigating the subway as someone with low vision can be a bit daunting. If a train station, before I even go down those steps, has braille signage letting me know this is an uptown or this is a downtown and whatever train it happens to be or trains. And once I get down there, there's an actual agent in the booth that I can speak to or that the machines that refill your Metro card are actually functioning with their accessibility function. I'm not hearing anything. And then once I'm past those turnstiles, if I get on a train that is speaking, whether it be with the automated system or a conductor speaking clearly, using a PA system that actually works as it should, not crackling, not hissing, not extremely low, then I have no disability, right? But, if there's no braille signage and I have to wait and take some minutes out of my day to ask some passerby who may or may not know what I need, then go down, there's no booth agent, the machine isn't working, the train isn't talking. Those are big problems. While the New York City bus system is accessible for customers who use wheelchairs, many buses lack visual and audio announcements. My most frequent frustration is not having equal access to announcements. If hearing people can hear them, then I want to see the announcements with captions too. If there's an announcement related to delays or track work or anything like that, I am unaware of when those announcements happen. I rely on the other passengers. I'll look at people's body language to figure out what's happening and if I notice many people get up, I'll follow them. I can't really ask an MTA employee. I'll see people go up to them and start talking to them. And I'll try to figure out what's going on, but then they vanish. 
So I type it on my phone to ask people what's happening. And sometimes they'll have an answer, but other times I really don't know what's going on. I want to know what's going on. I want to know when the next stop is, if I need to transfer, if I need to stay on the train, if the train is going express, if service is ending early. There are so many ways that having access would influence my surroundings and my awareness of what's going on. It would make me feel more independent instead of needing to depend on other people. Personally, the biggest complaint is sometimes you're at a station where there's no agent, depending on the time of day or remoteness of the station, like out deep in Brooklyn, deep in, in Queens, you might not have someone to ask. And the only way is to go exploring on the actual subway platform. How to explain it? It can feel like you're out of control. You're not in control in that moment in time. You know, you're at the mercy of whatever change happened for whatever reason. Who's willing to take the time? It really steps on a very strong sense of independence that I have. Accessoride is a door-to-door -door shared ride service provided by the MTA that offers transportation for people with disabilities who can't use the bus or subway. If I didn't have Accessoride, I would have to rely on inaccessible train stations and buses where either the lift isn't working or the driver's not gonna stop for you or people aren't gonna make space for you on the bus. Yeah, I'll need a uh, 5.30 p.m. pickup. On one hand, it's improved a lot over the last, like, I guess, three, four-ish years. You get a reminder call, which didn't used to happen. You get a reminder email, which also didn't used to happen. But service, you know, getting picked up at 7.40 in the morning and still not getting where you're going until 10.15 is problematic. And for someone like me who has so much work stuff going on and then also personal stuff going on, it makes it almost impossible to have a life and it gets anywhere on time and to have it work for you. And it's 275 each way, each ride. And you would think that they have some kind of discount like they do with the buses and the trains. They don't. A few months ago, I calculated it just so I could see how much it was. And I spent $450 in a month. In June 2018, New York City Transit hired its first ever accessibility chief, Alex Elaguna. I should see a sign to where the next elevator is, and actually you don't see one. Seeing that um, I've been hired into this role, this first ever role, where accessibility uh, an accessibility advocate has a seat at the table at the executive level, I think is just, you know, a sign of the times that people are taking uh, disability issues seriously. And I think that one of the biggest changes has been that we are looking to improve the transit system system-wide, not just a little bit here and there or incremental changes. We are talking about full accessibility. So in terms of using the transit system myself and specifically the subway system, uh, what's it like? I think the number one word, unfortunately for now, is different. I have to do a lot more planning than, you know, most people are probably very spontaneous. Uh, they jump on the train, they know it's gonna arrive, and they go about their trip. Uh, you know, myself, it's kind of ingrained, check the elevator status, check what's the nearest accessible station, how do I get from that station to where I'm actually going. In 1994, the MTA agreed to make 100 key subway stations accessible by 2020. This was part of a settlement that exempted the agency from full compliance with the ADA, which would have required 100% accessibility. Obviously, our, the, the subway system has 118 ADA compliant stations and the rest aren't. And our paratransit system is supposed to help accommodate for that. Buses are 100% ADA compliant, and I think we're working towards full compliance. In terms of my role, the ADA only goes so far. But the truth is, seeing where technology is today, we can do much more to help people with disabilities than per se is required by the ADA. I'm grateful that the MTA is trying, but it's still not enough. It would be nice to have someone who's deaf and who truly understands where we're coming from.
who really understands our frustrations and seriously pays attention to them, and who can be persistent in representing our concerns to the MTA. Everyone benefits when it's a more inclusive world, and that definitely applies to the MTA. If the MTA could make my life better, it would be by making sure that there was more braille available, making sure that all of their machines had the ability to be plugged into with any pair of headphones and provide speech feedback. It would be by making sure their subway cars had clear, audible announcements. My hope is that they recognize that people with disabilities have more than doctor's appointments, that they, you know, the MTA will see us as regular customers like everybody else, and that they'll see our needs as customers living in the city just trying to go places.